Why, howdy, y'all. Today we will be looking at the anatomy and physiology of prokaryotic cells. First off, we need to talk about the shape and the arrangement of the bacteria. Well, first we have bacillus, which is going to be our rod-shaped bacteria. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see here that we do have a single cell, or they can be in a chain together. Secondly, we have caucus, which is a sphere or a circle or more of a ball shape. Now, we have lots of different ways that these guys can be arranged. We have a single sphere or a single caucus or a pair, which would be a diplococcus or a tetrad or a cluster or it can also be a chain. Now y'all make sure to get down these different types on your piece of paper to show me in your notes. Next, we have the spirals. Now there's different forms of spirals. There's the comma spiral shape, there's the spirillium, and then the spirochete. So the spirillium is more like a wave versus the spirochete is sort of like in your spiral bound notebooks, it sort of looks like that coil. There are other shapes as well, such as the square, the appendage, the star shape, and then the filamentous. Again, make sure to get all of these types down so that you can show me in your notes. Okay now, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to spend a little bit of time on this slide here. I would like you to try and draw as best you can the prokaryotic structures of the cell. Now guys, remember, you are going to draw this for me and label it. Now, don't worry, we're not going to be going through all these pieces today. We're just mostly going to be looking at the cell walls. Let's talk about the cytoplasmic membrane. Now remember, the membrane surrounds the cytoplasm and defines the boundary of the cell. It is a barrier and it's highly discriminating conduit between cells and its surrounding, also known as. It only allows certain things in and out. Now remember, you should have learned this back in biology, but the cytoplasmic membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer. Ooh, we can split up the word bilayer and figure out how many layers it is. Remember, bi means two. So we know we're going to have two layers of the phospholipids. So just reminding y'all about what the phospholipid actually looks like. Remember, it's going to be a circle with two little squiggles off the bottom. Now the big thing to remember is that the head area is going to be polar, and it's also going to be hydrophilic. Now, hydrophilic means that it can touch water. Hydro meaning water, philic meaning loving. So it can touch water. But the two fatty acid chains, or its two tails, are going to be nonpolar and hydrophobic, which means water does not touch them. Now, when we make the phospholipid bilayer and put the tails on the inside, this makes a water membrane which means water can't go through, because remember, water cannot touch the tails. Again, this shows us a larger picture of the phospholipid bilayer. Again, you need to make sure you know that the polar heads are hydrophilic, means we, which means can touch water, and that the tails are hydrophobic and can't touch water. You might need to also make sure you can explain how this bilayer makes a waterproof barrier. Hint, hint, wink, wink. That's a good one for the test. Okay, here's another image of the phospholipid bilayer. Now, it's just not the phospholipids. It also has different types of proteins and carbohydrates, which are sugars that go through the actual membranes. So a peripheral protein is a protein that is on the outside. A pore allows things to go in and out, just like the pore on your skin cells. 
We also have integral proteins. Integral go all the way through the lipid bilayer. So again, peripheral are only on the outside. Integral are all the way through. Now cell walls. The cell walls of bacteria are made up of peptido peptidoglycan. It is comprised of alternating NAG and NAM molecules. Now guys, you will have to know that it's alternating NAG and NAM. You won't have to exactly draw it all the way out, but I will be showing you pictures. Attached to each NAM protein are four amino acids called a tetrapeptide. Now looking at the categories of bacteria, there are two major differences, and their found differences are in the cell walls. When we do a gram stain, the gram-positive bacteria will stain purple due to its structure of the cell wall. The gram-negative strains will stain red due to its cell wall. So let's take a look at the different types of cell walls in a gram-positive and a gram-negative bacteria. Just kidding, going back, there we go. Gram-positive cell walls. So a gram-positive cell wall has a really thick layer of peptidoglycan. They're layered on top of each other. It's a sheet and then another sheet of peptidoglycan and another sheet of peptidoglycan and another sheet laid on top of each other. It also contains tachoic acid that runs through the layers of peptidoglycan. So guys, yes, I say it's a chain of ribidophosphate and glycerol phosphate to which sugars and alanine are attached. Go ahead and write that down, but you just need to know that it's called tachoic acids. And, sorry, tachoic acids. And they run through the peptidoglycan layers of a gram-positive cell wall. Also, the tachoic acid sticks out above the peptidoglycan layer. So let's look at what peptidoglycan looks like, and then we'll look at an image of the cell wall. So, again, like I said, peptidoglycan are layers. So first we have this one sheet, and the sheets have the tetrapeptide chains on them, and the sheets are comprised of NAG and NAM pieces. Again, you don't need to remember what it actually is, but you do need to know that it's a layer and it's a sheet. Now in the gram-positive cell wall, I told you that the peptidoglycan layers on top of each other and makes many sheets on top of each other. Now if you look here, that we have three layers of peptidoglycan on top of the plasma membrane. And the black pieces running through it are going to be our tachoic acids or our tachoic um, membranes that are sticking out the top. Now when we talk about a gram-negative cell, this is a little bit different. Gram-negative cells have a thin layer of peptidoglycan, so only one sheet. And they are sandwiched between the cytoplasmic membrane and the outer membrane. Now guys, the cytoplasmic membrane looked exactly like the other cytoplasmic membrane. It's a lipid bilayer, so two layers, with the tails on the inside, and we have proteins going through it or on either side. Then on top of that plasma membrane, we have the peptidoglycan sheet. Now above the peptidoglycan sheet, we have a second outer membrane. And this one is a little bit different. It just doesn't have phospholipids. It has something called a lipopolysaccharide. Now let's break down that word. Lipopolysaccharide. Lipo, meaning lipid. Poly, meaning many. And saccharide, meaning sugar. So these little guys that have are, that are in purple, that are coming up above the outer membrane, are going to be our lipopolysaccharides. 
They are part lipid, and then the tails coming up are going to be sugars, many sugars put together. Now guys, remember, a gram negative does not have the tachoic acid. Instead, it has the outer membrane with the lipopolysaccharides. Okay, so you've seen the picture. Let's actually take the notes on the gram negative. So in the outer membrane, unlike any other membrane in nature, it has, like I said, two membranes. So the outer membrane is not a lipolipid bilayer, but it is made up of the lipopolysaccharides, or LPS, instead of the phospholipids. It does also contain porins, which are proteins that act like pores or channels to allow things through. Now guys, I said it was like a sandwich. So remember, if you look back here, the picture is like a sandwich, and inside the middle is the peptidoglycan, and the peptidoglycan isn't just smushed in there. There is a layer called the periplasm. The periplasm is our last slide we're gonna talk about today. I'm sorry, just kidding. Lipopolysaccharide, I've given you an image of it. Again, the, it looks like a lipid down at the bottom, and along the top is a long chain of different sugars, because saccharide means sugars and poly means many. Going back to my periplasm, I do apologize. It is the region between the cytoplasmic membrane and the outer membrane. It is filled with gel, and that is where you will find the peptidoglycan layer. It is also filled with different secreted proteins and enzymes. Now guys, again, you should be taking all these things down as notes. You should have drawn the picture of what the bacterial cell looks like. On Thursday, we'll be talking about the two different types of cell wall. I hope you enjoyed this and have a good day.